usually if you have to install some metal hardware on a project, the best approach is to use a template with a router like this with a collar on here or a guy bushing that works with the template to route it out nice and flat and then you just square out the corners. However, if you've only got one or two to do and if it's an odd size that you would have to make a template for, it often makes more sense just to do that by hand. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. This is just a demonstration, so I'm gonna clamp this piece of wood in my quick release vise. And then I'm gonna start with the hinge. And the way I normally install these is I line up the back edge of the leaf with the outside of the door or the frame that I'm mortising it into. What I'm doing here is I'm holding the hinge where it needs to be. And then I'm gonna use my homemade VIX bit just to mark the center hole for the screw. And then I'll drill that out with an ordinary drill bit. And the reason why I'm doing this is that the VIX bits will clog up fairly quickly. So I generally only use them to mark the hole. With the pilot hole drill, I can drive in the screw. And what that does is it holds the hinge exactly where it needs to be while I mark out around it. And to mark out around it, you can use a very sharp pencil, but I like to use a knife. So I've got my homemade marking knife here that I'm gonna outline the hinge with. And then while the hinge is still attached to the door, I can go ahead and mark the other two hole locations with the VIX bit again, and then drill those out as well. Now that I've got the hinge laid out, I can proceed cutting out the mortise. Uh, before I start doing that though, I'm gonna use my homemade carving knife here, and I'm gonna cut the ends of the mortise first. Before I do that though, I'm gonna take my chisel and I'm gonna pre-cut the outside edge. And what this does is it prevents the wood from chipping out as you complete your cut with the knife. You can also do that with the chisel, but what I find is that the chisel will make the mortise just a little bit longer because the chisel, as it's being pounded in, will force the grain apart on both sides. Now I'm gonna take it out of the vise again and use my pencil just to put a guideline on the outside here, just holding it with the tip of my finger up against the wood and pulling it back to draw the line at the approximate thickness of the hinge. You can also take the hinge and put it on there and use that as a guide, but I find it's usually good enough just to use my finger like that. With the piece put back in my vise, I can take my one inch chisel and I'm just gonna score that line that I drew. I'm not gonna try to remove any material here. All I wanna do is just make a very straight line across with the chisel. Now you can try to do this with the knife, but what the knife will do is it will follow the grain, whereas the chisel will cut in regardless of which way the grain is going. Now with that line established, you can go ahead and start to remove some material there. What you need to do though is make sure that you're not angling the chisel inwards towards the bottom of the mortise. Better to have it angled slightly outwards so that you don't cut your mortise too deep. Okay, now I can shift it back to where it was before and you can see here that I didn't try to remove everything. I just want to get that nice clean edge on the outside so that when you put the hinge in, you'll see that it's nice and clean there. The method that I'm going to use next is kind of ragged, so you don't want to see that on the edge. I'll mount the wood back in my vise, and then I can go ahead and chip out the rest of the mortise. And the way I'm going to do that is by making a series of cuts with the one inch chisel spaced about 3 sixteenths of an inch apart. It depends upon the wood that you're working with. If you're working with really dense or figured hardwood, you probably want to get your cuts closer together. And what you're aiming to do here is to drive the chisel in just the thickness of the hinge itself. It depends upon how important the project is, but I'll often do it in two passes. The first pass establishes the cut, and then the second one refines it a little bit further and it actually knocks out some of the chips. One thing I try to do is stay back from the inside of the mortise by a very small amount. You don't want to do what I just did here and overcut.
That got rid of the bulk of the material. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut the inside of the mortise very much like I did before with the line I drew and then finish cleaning that stuff out. Trying my hinge in there, it's a nice snug fit around it, but it's not deep enough yet, so I'm gonna cut a little bit more. Okay, that is a really good fit. Nice and flush with the surface. Uh, what happens if you cut it too deep? You know, that's possible. Just cut some cardboard shims, the same size or slightly smaller than the leaf of the hinge, and then put that behind there and pack it out until, you know, it's up to the surface, basically. It doesn't have to be any more complex than that. That's what all the professionals do. They use cardboard. Okay, so that's it for the hinge. What, what happens when you need to mortise something in that doesn't go to the edge like that? Say you got like a ball catch like I have here. How would you mortise that in? So we've got basically the same procedure. I just gotta locate it where I wanna put it. And then I'm going to mark out the holes and drill those. This time I'm not gonna use the VIX bit because the hardware is upside down. And then like the hinge, I'm going to screw it on and use my marking knife to mark around it. And notice the thing about the marking knife, I'm not going all the way to the corner. That way I'm not ever going to overcut. I've got it marked out and I took the ball catch off again. And you can see here that this has to go down inside the wood. So I need to drill a hole that is the right size. You don't want to try to match the hole exactly. You want to be a little bit bigger, if possible. But you don't want to be too big that the cover plate doesn't cover the hole. So I've marked out the center and now I'm going to drill that out a bit deeper than it needs to be. Now I can start cutting out the mortise, and once again, I'm gonna start on the ends, except this time I'm not gonna use the knife. I am gonna use the chisel, but I'm not gonna drive it in hard and aggressively. I'm just gonna make a very shallow cut, and then I'm gonna back cut that from the inside of the mortise so that I remove some of the material right at the end. And that way the chisel won't push outwards as it's being driven in. And then when the ends look like they're deep enough, I can work on the sides in the same way as I did before. I'm just gonna use the chisel to push down firmly, but I'm not using a mallet, just to make sure that that line is there. My next move is not to chip out like I did with the other mortise because there's a lot less material to remove here. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna take my half inch chisel and I'm gonna go from inside that hole and chip towards the end of the mortise. And what that'll do is it'll take out one big piece on each end, and then I can work towards the sides from each end as well. Okay, a good snug fit around it. Once again, it's not as deep as I would like. 
But since this is just a demonstration, I'm not going to actually make it go any deeper. Um, once again, if you go too deep, you can always use cardboard to shim it out. And that works exceptionally well. And there's no shame in it. If you go too deep, that's fine. The shame comes when you do a really ragged hole around for it to fit in. It should be a nice, clean, snug fit. The other thing about doing this, okay, if you, I mean, you got one or two pieces of hardware to put in, but occasionally it's a good idea to do this, especially if you're just starting out, not to rely on the machine so much, but to do some hand tool work. You can really tune up your control over chisels, especially by doing this kind of work here. And you get a, a feel for how to deal with the grain of the wood. Like what I was doing there by, you know, re kind of making relief cuts at the end of the mortise so that it wouldn't push the opening bigger than it actually needs to be. That's something that you'll discover as you, you work with the hand tools. The other thing is it makes you appreciate a really sharp chisel, a well-tuned up chisel. And if you haven't seen it yet, you can watch my video where I sharpened not only this one inch chisel here that I use in this video, I also use it to uh, make this half inch chisel absolutely razor sharp.